talk about one of the TCMs, or one of uh, probably the seven of the seven that Bill mentioned earlier. Uh, and I'm happy to say that Nico Franz and his co-authors from the uh, Animal Hospital Collections Network meeting um, have let me parasitize their talk. Um, some of them here to kind of keep me honest on it, so I have just a subset of things to talk about for um, our project. We are using Symbiota and Filtered Push as a way of bringing together a pretty disparate set of um, museums, but, but we do have a, a common focus. So um, this is part of Neil Hobbs at, at NAU, his approach is the emergence of scams over. <laughs> It makes it sound like we come from the black and blue version. Um, Neil Cobb is the main PI, and he's in the yellow uh, square up there. This happy group of people met in Tempe last August. Uh, we got our NSF funding to uh, begin work in July. And so right away, we had our very first planning meeting with most of the curators and collection managers um, uh, from the 10 schools or so that uh, are taking part in SCAN. Oh, I should also mention here too that the thing that we're holding that you're all probably frowning at, like, what is that? This is a shameless plug by Neil Cobb for his modified pitfall trap design. <laughs> so for any of you working on ground dwelling arthropods, which is what our TCN is focusing on, uh, he would really like to suggest that you use this. There was no way I was going to bring something with wire and on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask Neil if you want more information about that. Um, otherwise, I think I might not be here now. Um, the schools involved uh, are in the region of the southwestern U.S., which is more or less in that red um, polygon there. The sons are the schools involved, and there are 10 of us or so. Uh, scattered over quite a wide area. And the green diamonds are an example of the kinds of data that, that we have. They, they represent um, spider collections held by the Denver Museum. And uh, Paula Cushing there worked on the spider survey for Colorado, which is why it's so densely covered in Colorado. But um, is to show, we did this as a way of showing that we have quite a lot of information here, even though our museums may see may be rather small, or people are wondering, like, where the heck are you guys? But we, we do have something to contribute, so um, this is an example of that. Um, so we're all scattered in the various museums, which tend to have a basic shade of gray to them, apparently. Um, however, our people add quite a bit of color. Um, and with, though we're scattered all apart, where we come together is through the portal, through Symbiota, which is being um, served for us on the University of Florida. So you can go right now to this site. You can Google it. Um, I also have the URL later. Um, you can check one or any combination or all of these museums and look for holdings that we have, uh, primarily on ground dwelling artifacts, which is our which is our so our rationale for working on this is that the Southwest is a, is a really diverse area because of its topography. We've got lots going on uh, geographically, um, and, but it's not as well documented as, as other parts of the US. And the, our, the collections that make up this group are small or kind of medium sized with the possible exception of Texas and which is a pretty big collection. And they have different taxonomic emphases, they have different histories, um, what they were set up to do, whether they were like supporting an ag school or like an evolutionary an ecology school, <coughs> different levels of identification, digitization, um, and the average distance is this one is about 480 miles, so there's not much integration either. And it's not easy to visit all of us, so doing it online is a, is a much more effective way of getting to us. So our focus are, are things primarily collected in pitfall traps, because as diverse as our museums are, we almost all have a core group of arthropods that we collect that way for ecological studies. And so that's why that's how our TCM uh, received its focus. And this includes, while not all invertebrates, um, I actually think it's kind of good to only be looking at the, the arthropods that have been 
rinse, it seems kind of small now by comparison. Um, but that's arachnid centipedes, millipedes, several beetle families, the cockroaches, and truly, when you cockroaches, so it's good. <laughs> cockroaches, uh, ants, some of the wasps, um, and a few other groups. But there's plenty of taxa for us to work on. And our emphasis is going to be over quality, so that we're, we're also trying to figure out where to put the fulcrum in the slice that Bill showed between how many we can get done and how well each record can be, uh, can be done. Uh, and we are using mostly, most of us are using Symbiota as our uh, uh, database platform and using the filtered push technology to help us with remote IDs and to keep up with uh, taxonomic changes. So all of this up to this point sounds like we're by taxonomists, for taxonomists, but we're not exclusive to that because we think if we can actually take care of that set of us, then the, another range of applied and outreach um, uses will come through SCAN. And so we can, if all you're looking for is like a picture of a parameter, it looks like we can do that. But if you're also interested in trying to improve an ID or look at distribution patterns or look for something for modeling, Climate change, when we look, we can also provide that with the information as well, eventually, but we're just starting. So, this is the, the scary data slide. Um, um, what I mostly wanted to show you with this is the great differences in these museums. That we've got different, um, the small collections, big collections, mostly using Symbiota, but not all. Um, different numbers of specimens have been imaged um, or cataloged even so. But when you put us all together, we've got that 11 million specimens that we have the potential to work with. And that's not a small number. So we really do feel like we have a contribution that we can make from our part of the country um, to understand better uh, what arthropods are doing in, uh, primarily in and the rest of the slide is that rather than um, commit to trying to handle all 11 million, we've just decided to work with half a million. And uh, as Bill said, we'll see at some point if we don't you know, hit ourselves in the head, well, why did we say we could do that many? Because, you know, but we're making, we're making a good start at it, I think. This slide, um, I'm happy to say, I updated since Nico gave this talk last fall. We've been changing that fast, and records have been going in, um, and Texas A&M came uh, online so that the slide that people originally used just a few months ago was already outdated. So that's kind of a nice thing. We can keep that going. It will be good. Um, so right now, these are specimens that are online, that are database, and you can see that that's a real mixed bag, too, with the kinds of effort, the staffing that we have, um, how much we already have going into it when we transfer it to the symbiota. So it's all over, all over the play part, as it were. Um, but in the, in the aggregate, I think we will be good with that. And the number of specimens georeferenced also is really quite variable. And you'll see that, that those five pieces mm -hmm. uh, sure change size. Um, some schools are really quite good at having a lot done, ASU is good, Texas A&M is good. New Mexico schools, a lot of records, not so much fewer of the same going on. So uh, the kinds of needs that we have are also a little bit disparate. But overall, even though we're working with a fairly small percent of our total holdings, and you can see that we have 65% or so georeferenced, um, which sounds pretty good, but that's actually scattered over the schools and ranges from like 100% essentially at ASU down to 4% so, and 23% in my school, so I'm working on it. <laughs> um, the University of Arizona at Tucson is also taking a little different approach to georeferencing and imaging in that they're putting up um, images and are going to rely on crowdsourcing to help with their IDs and some other information. So it will be an interesting experiment to see how well that works with their collection. So with images, um, all of a sudden, those numbers, those, those 10 or 11 schools is now matched down to about three, because most of us don't have very much up yet, and that's right where we're on point four, and that's why I'm here. And, um, 
learn about how we can do a better job of this. Almost all of us have used uh, are using the visionary digital imaging system, either through the portable passport size or the full scale uh, imaging system like we have at, at now. So that we can take uh, most of those will be using automontage so that we can make really good detailed 3D images uh, that can then be put online and then used with Zoomify so that you can focus on different structures and still have really good resolution. So that that's our goal for that that, that will then add quite a bit of time to each image that we do. But um, that's what we think we'll be working for. Our activities we're really just getting started. Uh, we're still working more on getting group coordinated and on promoting things. We're working on um, standards. Um, MAU has published, or they've worked on quite a number of how-to videos with their students. And they've had several students who have uh, an immediate background to create these videos on how to do the database and how to do the imaging. Those are um, available for, for people to help here. So we also want to get our own collections up and we would like to help other people by showing what we've done and see if that would work for you. And of course, as Neil said, we took the protocols that you all had developed and took them all apart and put them together for, for our schools. So, um, and I'm also working on, <coughs> on that as well. So in the near future, we are looking at getting more of the scan collections, the original li uh, libraries, good things to work on, <laughs> museums together, um, through into the symbiote symbio portal, whether or not they're using symbiote. Uh, we're working at getting our imaging ramped up, uh, getting our standards built, and we are writing protocols. And so we're trying to take that extra step of writing it all down so we can train people. And of course, the best way to do it is to have somebody else try to find out what the place are in the protocol or what they do or don't do. Uh, and we're working more to implement the yeah, optimized filter push to help us with the, the taxonomy so that we can make good annotations. Uh, as many change on things. But the main thing that we wanted to say for the near future is that we're trying to expand the networking to work with other collections, other TCNs, uh, specialized collections like some of the scarab groups at Lincoln, that kind of thing to also be act as their portal. And that, that scan is not just for us in, in the Southwest. Uh, and not just for arthropods either, because I think any of these variants is going to come through this. So we're, we're, we're this core group, but we would like to leverage that into being a portal for, um, for more groups. So this is our URL, so you can see that we are uh, coming through the University of Florida, and um, I wanted to put one habitat shot in there for the kinds of places that we have where, where we do our work. So that's the, that's the ecologist talking. <laughs> 